Because you know there's a handful of people actually run everything. That's true. It's provable. I'm not it's all about not. control. To them we just cattle. Numbers battling each other while they're creeping in the shadows. Scheming, plotting, clocking your every move. Locked in your mind, brainwashing till it's rocking. Got the population operating as they want them. Symbolically mocking them, thinking nothing can stop them. So open your eyes to the lies of the evil. The poison in the minds and the lives of your people. And every time they lead you down the line to deceive you. And by then, it's always too late to see. Through the veil that they hide behind Cause your third eye is blind Better take a stand We running out of time Ain't nobody coming to save us Fuck what you had in mind Arm yourself with the truth And jump behind the battle line Can we turn it around? Yeah, it's possible Divide a little more full But united world stops This is for the world This is for the masses Attached to the strings Being pulled by puppet masters This is for the youth Searching for the proof Keep on looking for the clues I'll provide you with some truth This is for the ones Waking up from the spell Beginning to discover themselves Yeah, this is for the youth Searching for the truth Keep on looking for the clues I'll provide you with some proof This is for the world World Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of A Hitchhiker's Guide to Truth. I'm your host, James Cordner. Today is June 17th of 2023, and we have an exciting show tonight. Uh, But like I do always, let's just talk about the housekeeping real quick, and we'll just go over this. So we're streaming live on the One Great Work Network, among other platforms, but I'm very proud to be over here at onegreatworknetwork.com. Uh, there's over 70 content creators over at onegreatworknetwork.com where we are trying to live up to the phrase, we are trying to end slavery one mind at a time. Uh, come on over there and check out all the fine folks over there producing content much like this. And next, of course, I'm going to keep promoting Seed 5 Metamorphosis. It's a free online conference about the occult, esotericism, freedom, history, philosophy, symbolism, and natural law. It's going to be on September 23rd and the 24th of this year, 2023. Next, we're closing in on the end of enrollment for How to Become the True Media of 2023, hosted by Mark Passio of What on Earth is Happening.com. Uh, How to Become the True Media is an intensive 23 week technology skill sharing seminar that's going to be every Monday uh, starting at 8 p.m., going to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's going to be going on from July 10th to December 11th of this year. It will be hosted on the Tele- Telegram platform. Go over there and enroll at howtobecomethetruemedia.com. Uh, it's beginner and intermediate skill sets to be taught in this seminar. It will be including operating system skills, file systems and disk formatting, file and folder management, workflow and best practices, word processing and publishing, internet and networking basics, Searching the web and the dark web, graphic design, print publishing, building presentations, audio editing and publishing, video editing and publishing, live streaming, web publishing, internet sharing and collaboration, media hardware, and equipment. So go on over there. So toward the end of the night tonight, we're going to be, I want to uh, take your calls. So uh, I have this up on freeyourmindne.com forward slash call. So I just want to go over this live on the air real quick. Uh, gotta, it's not that difficult. It's just a few, it's just a few criteria, just some guidelines to make sure that we're not wasting anybody's time here. Yours included your time. I don't want to waste it. I don't want my time wasted. I don't want my guest time wasted. So number one, make sure you're using the proper type of browser. Firefox will not work. There's a couple of other brothers browsers that don't work, but I recommend using a Chromium based browser, Brave browser or Microsoft edge. Those are Chromium based. Uh, Google Chrome, that's a Chromium-based browser. Chromium itself, these are the browsers that will work. So when you're joining what I'm calling the green room, you will be prompted prompted to enter a name. 
I'm requesting that you use a real first name. It doesn't have to be your real first name. Just use a real name. Your name could be Rob. You could say your name is Tim. I don't care. But sophomore candles will not be called on. So if you're, you know, PP Grabber 2000, you're not, you're not getting your call answered. Uh, number three, make certain that you've granted the software access to the proper microphone. Uh, using your camera is optional. Calls would be answered in the order in which the callers join the green room. There's limited space in the green room, so call in early. And calls will be answered toward the end of the broadcast after the general discussion is had, unless otherwise stated during the broadcast. But don't wait to call. You can watch the show from the green room as well. So that does it for the housekeeping. And uh, so tonight we have a couple of very special guests and new friends of mine. And they're new friends of the show. So lately I've been talking about, uh, well, last week we talked about animism. And this week we're going to be talking a little bit more about, you know, living in nature, living off grid and, and uh, kind of experiencing that lifestyle. So I've brought in the fine folks over at Levolution, Amy and John Paul. And uh, welcome to the show, Amy and John Paul. I see you have the little man there as well. How are you guys tonight? Hey. Hey, doing good. How are you, James? Thanks for having us. Big delay. We're honored to be here. Yeah, thank you. But there's a huge delay in our audio, so um, I don't know how to remedy that at the moment. Oh, we'll just be patient. All right. Well, you take it away. You tell us about about your trial, and I'll just hang back. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it kind of came about organically. We didn't want to pay our death pledge as a mortgage. Um, we, we were roped into that American lie and uh, realized we wanted to get land to grow our own, to be less um, uh, sufficient on, or excuse me, less uh, dependent. dependent, yes, thank you, on the grocery stores. Um, and, you know, we saw this, we read Brave New World, we read Night 4, we saw this nonsense coming. We knew we had to get some land to get to growing our own food. Um, not that we were into escaping, we just, we always had that plan. We were going to raise our son and then get some land. Um, so the off-gridding wasn't really, we didn't think, think about it really. We just somebody every month they, they make up a number and you got to pay electricity and uh they change it every month and the power goes off well your bill doesn't go down and then we had a smart meters and right close to his bedroom on our house which i knew all about the internet of things and how that works and yeah it's it's all bad and so we wouldn't want any part of it and uh yeah it kind of just started that way um looking for land and we w found probably the furthest point east in the united states we could be um and uh it's a magical place here close to eastport maine and nova scotia so uh yeah kind of we didn't know anything about it just went fully into the unknown and we were going to teach ourselves as we went and it was rough to say the least and we've been doing it for about two and a half years now excuse me a little less than two and a half and, and uh yeah what a, a mm -hmm. so much we've learned since then but yeah did you want to add to that yeah, just one second yeah. So the little guys, through what? anyway, go ahead, brother. So uh, tell me about some of those struggles that you guys went through. I'm sure the audience would, you know, if they're interested in doing, maybe not going all the way like you guys did, but maybe, you know, rolling back as much as they can. What could people expect to go through? I mean, you yeah. went through it already. So take it away on that one. Yeah, it's uh. Tell me, pooped in a bucket, or should we go that far? No, nah, well, yeah, we um, 
Sorry, what was the question? I, I... Examples of the hardships. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so many. Wow. Um, well, first, it was we had land. We didn't have any electricity, uh -huh. right, or septic set up. So we just, we got the land. Um, we were living in a hotel with our cats in the winter, and uh, we had to get out of there. And we found this piece of land, finally found it. Then we got, we looked for a camper or a fifth wheel or some type of trailer, travel trailer or RV to just pull onto our property. And uh, so just all these logistics looking and everywhere and just kind of, so we found one we had in Wells, Maine, we had to take it apart and then drag it five hours up to our new property um, with a friend. So, I mean, the difficulties were um, were great and many, and we didn't, we went to having all the conveniences, right, in a nice little hotel room to then having really none. Uh, uh, so that was, was a huge, just. So we had, you know, yeah, had, you know, the bathroom, the water, the power. Um, the power, the water. We get all our water from a spring. We lug it here. We feed our whole garden with that water that here. We uh, are dry dock, so we fill our tank with that water. John Paul does most of that. And um, we take showers. We get a hot water heater, portable hot water heater that we put into our bathroom and we have hot water in um, our shower which is so nice when we first got here we were showering outside under a bag um, on nice days so now we have hot water um the poop the the septic we have a guy come and um suck all the waste out it's only 60 bucks a month and they come and they suck it all out and take it away so that's a really tip for people well, who are doing we were doing i was basically thing that the septic the the water we were excuse me and just we, we were such kooks we first got here we were pooping in a bucket we didn't even know how our trailer bathroom worked right and uh i was lugging it digging a hole you know way down on our property we had we have two acres where we are on the side of a mountain and we're looking towards the east and we can see the mountains in Canada with the sunrises and um, yeah we're right on the 45th parallel so it's an amazing spot the tides are crazy um, 26 foot swings from, from the tides and uh, just a really the, the Milky Way is us um, this kind of lifestyle you get more in tune with nature yeah. because we're outside a lot or we live in a tiny home so we're out we're inside so this kind of lifestyle you get in touch with nature even more which is really really beautiful yes and it fit our lifestyle as being minimalists um uh yeah moving always is always a, a way to downsize and so when we moved out of a house into a tiny house we really downsized and just that off gridding and um, being self-sufficient. We didn't, we don't like the concept of paying for something you can do yourself. And so that was always in our mind. We never got bought, uh, paid for snow plowing or any of that. We always did our own shoveling, tried to be as self-sufficient as we could in a home. However, there's so many expenses that are out of your control. So that's what we, um, we like taking that into our own hands, figuring out our own power and figuring out our, you know, our, you know, how to live and how we can do this here. And we, when we moved here, we chose the spring. So we'd have a nice, easier transition with the summer and preparing for the winter. The water to the spring, the water from the spring is very, very clean. Um, it's pure. It's there's thousands of gallons under the ground around here. It's the biggest spring in Maine. 
and it has very, very clean, fresh water. Yes. We have a filter too. Um, it takes care of 5,000 contaminants. Um, so we use a, a filter for our water and uh, make sure everything's filtered. Yes, we catch, we catch the rain water, uh, feed our food and medicine. And uh, yeah, we try to be as self-sufficient and um, all right. All this water talk got you thirsty, huh? So we're, um, yeah, we're always learning and it was rough. I had to attach, a tw so we have a 35 foot travel trailer with a 20 foot patio attached um, that we built the floor and put all that together. And man, was it leaky when we first put it together. All It was raining basically inside every time it rained and tons of silicone and caulking and figuring out leaks and getting the mosquitoes, at, you know, uh, proof proof in the the place for mosquitoes and so lots of different things and variables you look at all the wood here oh yeah the wood too we just um we we put in a wood stove um in in the camper which was a life save the wood stove really we couldn't do this at all um negative 50 to negative 30 degrees here for two what was it for a week or so yeah this this winter's um coldest night was negative 50 with the wind chill and we we're pretty warm because of a small space and a nice will and uh yeah um you know we don't have a fridge we don't we haven't had a fridge and we have a bag um we're gonna dig a hole, I think, this summer and put a, a fridge in the ground, the old fashioned way. Um, we eat very fresh every day. We eat from the garden, so our food is really fresh, and we make bread every day. So we eat, you know, very fresh, fresh food. Mm -hmm. That's that's very interesting. Oh, I was actually very curious about what you guys did during the winter. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, our water pump froze. Um, our pipes freeze. Um, we got a new water pump. But then, uh, yeah, they unfreeze around <laughs> um, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. So it's it's all it's I call it boot camp. You know, it's always about yeah figuring it out, come up with there's problems, and then we come up with solutions. Yes, and. Amy, she's probably the toughest girl I know. Most girls would have ran, not in the situation, ran for their lives. And she's been so brave and strong. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the little guy as well. So we just kind of, you know, lots of nights are trying to figure our power out. We'd have flashlights and our batteries would be dead. Sunlight. So we're learning to also back up solar power uh, to get a wind charger because we're in a, a high wind area and we can utilize that wind while we sleep at night to charge our uh, you know home up as well. So there's always upgrades and things to learn about in troubleshooting uh, with the power or or whatever we're doing but uh this is our third summer growing and uh that has been great growing our own food and medicine and just being uh outside more you know having a tiny house kind of forces you out into nature into that uh, peacefulness and the stillness where we can uh teach our son and enjoy kind of raise our son how we wished we were raised yeah speaking of speaking yeah, of sons yeah. anyone anyone just listening to this they have their son with them so he's uh a very young man he's probably around six maybe five years old and he's uh doing what six and five year olds do so if you hear background noise too bad put up with it 
<laughs> we have a we have a we have a question in the chat, and it, I'll bring it up on screen. I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, some random assortment of letters wants to know how do you get your medicine? Where would you go if you got pregnant, and is it clean enough to do a home birth? Yep, new earth, home birth. Yep. Yeah, medicine comes from the earth too. Um, so yeah, it's it's gall grown, and uh, it's very clean. Um, the clean here it says, is it clean enough clean, to have a home birth? Yeah, clean yes. enough to yep. have a home birth, of course. Yep, very clean. How much? How, and what we how read? Much? What was James saying? Uh, oh, go ahead, brother. How much land do you guys use for your farm? Oh, vital. Yeah, come. We have two acres, and we use. Uh, I don't even know the you know footage, but we basically there was piles of dirt here. There was five piles of dirt, and dirt is basically nutrientless soil if anyone wants to know that. So we just pushed over the dirt piles and started planting seeds basically and throwing in, adding nutrients, adding seaweed, adding um, um, compost, the soil uh, healthy. So very little is needed to grow food. I mean, you could grow by a little box and grow so much food for uh, a single family um so we don't have like huge farm where we're growing and selling it to people we just grow it for ourselves um we can everything so yeah. we had enough food for our last couple winters we had plenty of food um so we're just we're learning as we go you know i've we've never gardened in our lives so we started this so it's uh we're just learning as as we go really yeah but it's very rewarding to go out in the garden, just grab a bowl and some scissors and cut a salad. And then the, the freshness, and you can just taste all the nutrients, the vitamins. There's no middlemen. There's no like long wait from when it's um, harvested to when it's in your body. So that part, I really recommend everyone uh, try and enjoy. So uh, let's talk about Levolution. Yeah, brother, Levolution. Tell me yeah, all about it. So Levo yeah, Levolution is that personal journey, right, towards the higher levels of consciousness, self-love, like, and in short, know thyself, to love thyself, to love others, okay? We all have been taught to love outside of ourselves, love everything right love things use we love people and use things and don't care really much for things but you know their function and 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 all that not not really the fashion part so the love evolution is that personal journey we take to wake ourselves up or pull our rear ends out of the uh, out of our excuse me our our heads out of your ends and uh and then that collective love could change this world overnight if we all loved ourselves and truly instead of whereas in that self-loathing in the in that uh the suffering the self-inflicted suffering right the ignorance the apathy the laziness and the cowardice that is not what Love evolution is. Love evolution is speaking out, don't, not giving a shit when anyone thinks, and speaking the truth, yeah, knowing natural laws, sharing the, right, the objective morality. Because once you know, you have that moral obligation. Um, but yeah, it's that journey, that personal journey of higher conscious levels. We have a superfood out too. We we like health and try to teach people how to love themselves to health. Okay, your your cells all respond to 
dialogue. You either, if you love yourself, your cells are going to be happy. You're going to be healthy. You're going to feel great. If you hate yourself, your cells are going to deteriorate. They're going to manifest disease, illness, sickness, and you're going to suffer. So it's that love frequency we all were born at and the programs are on us and we have to deprogram ourselves. Undomesticate ourselves. Uh, yeah, help to love ourselves because we can't give what we don't have. Okay, we all say we love this, we love that but we don't love ourselves so we really can't love anything else a lot of us so that's the evolution that self-love um and choosing love over fear right truth over the lies and we all have fear them, loving yourself forgiving yourself being honest with yourself yeah. treating others the way you want to be treated yeah. You're here. So, um, uh, I just had, it was on the tip of my tongue. I apologize, but, um, oh, not at all. how long, ago, how long ago did you start uh, revolution? So that was a brainchild of mine. Um, in 2011, I had that, my personal revolution and I, I was in California, I was working on a farm and working in nature and my heart chakra just blew open. And I was, wow, what am I going through? This is amazing. It's an evolution, it's of love, it's a love evolution. And I said, wow, that's, that's it, what I'm going through. I, I need to share this with everyone. Uh, Instead yeah. of chasing things outward, it's all inward. Yeah, where my everything's e in there. Yes, and quieting my ego. But then we, in 2019, we started doing video, and the product came out in 2020 into the uh, our superfood uh, health product. Get my bottle here. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to get, stop working for others so we wanted to create an online business and uh and help for you know, you know with their health and this is some bottle we're gonna send you some bottles Jane. yep thank you for having us James. yeah and your oh, kids can you. take to sebastian did in his smoothies it's got 102 vitamins and minerals taking it for three years our hair skin nails Everything is so smooth, soft. Um, it works from the inside out. Yes. Gives you all the nutrients your body needs. And it's uh, Dr. Sebi and Spa, if you know him. Oh, nice. He's an incredible um, truth speaker. And they jailed him and basically uh, persecuted him for speaking out against <clears throat> all the atrocities of Big Pharma. And, and uh, he said, if nature didn't make it, don't take it. And he created this blend, um, alkaline uh, super cell repair blend, basically. And we thought it was amazing. So a private label had it made and uh, put it on Amazon for a little while. Don't we couldn't get, we couldn't do business with that evil empire. So we got off of there and chose the moral high road. We were selling a lot of bottles and getting great reviews, but it didn't feel right to have them as a middleman. Yeah, unfortunately, like Amazon is tricky like that because when it comes to books, they'll Amazon will sell books that other stores won't. It's it, but I can I can agree with you about them being a part of the Amazon a Mason, you know. <laughs> the, oh, wow! The, yes. The, 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 the CIA cut out, you know. But like it's oh, totally. But um, but yeah. So a hundred and two, uh, 
in 102 vitamins and minerals, huh? I got. Yeah. Yeah. So the there's three ingredients. We have Irish sea moss, which is a seaweed, bladder rack, which is another seaweed, and burdock root. So Irish sea moss mm -hmm. and bladder rack have 92 vitamins and minerals, and the burdock root adds 10 more. So it's a a full spectrum of vitamins and minerals. Dr. Sebi's formula. And he, he, he studied and researched this formula for many, many years and had a lot of success with it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, knock the rust off from the inside out, right? Health starts within, right? They know that. That's why they try to jab us. So we put these amazing superfoods in our bodies to build up that immune system, fortify it. We so, haven't been sick in years. Yeah. The He's never been sick. Basically. Never had an earache. And no. uh, so you know, the people uh, having to, and we enjoy uh, helping promote health and wellness as opposed to some piece of plastic product that's just selling on Amazon. Yeah. It's funny how uh, the kids that avoid the doctor's office are the ones that don't get sick. It's weird. Yep. No, yeah, no, absolutely. no customer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my wife and I are going, experiencing that kind of, uh, that, that kind of, I don't know, thing <laughs> where our children don't get sick and we, we don't go to the doctors. Like, you know, it's just. Same. I take your kid to the doctor. Yeah. They're, they're definitely sick. linked. Exactly. Absolutely good, but because um, they got I had yeah, fear, they ha have us going to those. Doctors. Oh yeah, no, take it away. Yeah, the fear of the the fear of uh, of being sick all the time. You know, like that's how they just yes, pulled the off this fear. whole. Yeah, yeah, the pandemic was all about the fear of being sick. Ooh. Yes, absolutely. But how did you guys fare? When viruses that? aren't even spread. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, it uh, it was you know we were we actually transitioned to this lifestyle during that. Um, now we uh we had our whole plan when, when this all hit, and we've been speaking out against vaccines and jabs long before that because when he was born we just were telling people all about it and saying they're coming for us too you know adults are gonna have to make the choice and uh it was it was very um disturbing it was really disturbing to wake up and but like a bad dream you know however we're less affected being out in the country um but it was just yeah, we tried not grocery stores you know as much as possible because i wouldn't i wouldn't wear a mask we wouldn't wear masks sebastian no. never put one on no um so that was challenging it but was. We, we worked around it yeah but it was um yeah it was a trying time but it was good to speak out because we could all just now it was all in our face and on our face, literally. The fear was just, everyone was just wearing it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm getting an incredible. And our, our, family, yeah. our, fa our, our families were, weren't happy with our, our choices. And um, we stayed strong no matter what, because we know the truth. And so when you do your research and you know the truth, you have the confidence because you know you're doing the right thing. And we've just stayed focused. Yes. And we saying no and not caring what others think of us, um, or especially our families, because having that knowledge gives you the confidence, like she said, mm -hmm. to really yeah, put a kibosh on all the ancestral patterns I was raised with and 
all the competitive schools, churches, coaches, teachers, parents, and that whole competitive world um, that I was raised in. I didn't want that for our, our son. And I knew that was, it wasn't, it was all wrong, really. I was wanted I was going to ask you about your interactions with your families and how they responded to you guys going out into the country and I wanted to ask you too uh why Maine why was there something specific about Maine or like you said earlier I mean you kind of you kind of stated earlier that you just went as far east as you could but I I'm wondering why Maine because there are plenty of other states where doing what you guys do would be a whole hell of a lot easier. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah why, well, why, why we, we we met in Maine. Um, she's from Maine. I'm from uh, Connecticut. I grew up. I was in Cali ten years. But Maine's beautiful here. We love the season. Um, it has everything: the ocean, the mountains, the lakes. Um, you know, the planes and it was pretty spontaneous too. We saw the post on Zillow and we fell in love with the view. We said, Oh wow, it'd be really cool to live on the side of a mountain. And we just followed interest and checked it out. Bastion didn't want to leave the to land and he cried, he didn't want to leave, and it just felt right. Yeah. So we said, Yep, yeah, let's do any water yet or anything here but we could figure it out so that's it's pretty spontaneous yeah uh, but we we enjoy maine and the weather does we we embrace the winter we we love um snowshoeing ski snowboarding sledding all that <sighs> fun stuff so we're uh, so we were so hot last winter it was like miami beach we're all in our bathing suits pretty much in here. Yeah. Believe it or not, it was so hot. And toasty. Uh, yeah, in our old house, we could never heat it. It was three stories and we'd always have a wood stove crank and we, we could never, never get it get it warm. We'd always have hats and gloves on in there and and uh just like the biggest hoax. And then we tried to get a propane heater, a monitor, and that was 300 bucks every couple of weeks. And we just said, this is a biggest racket, you know, winter in Maine. If you're going to pay a propane guy, it's just ridiculous. And uh, it went, we, were, we were filling the propane every three weeks to filling it here every 10 months. So if you, you can imagine how much less that that costs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I can definitely, <laughs> definitely uh, get get what you guys are saying on that. It's not fun having oil or propane being a source of heat during the winter. Yeah, it's. I live in a house that was bu built almost two hundred years ago, so it leaks like a sieve, wow. and and it's it's very expensive, very expensive, you know. Yeah, but, but I wanted so, to yeah, ask we, you. We, Need to plow, oh, yeah. but um, your your families. You mentioned that you mentioned something about them. I wanted to hear more about the way that they reacted to this because I imagine that that it was probably really yeah. uh, trying to get through to them that you guys would be okay. Yeah, my mom said she was worried about us and sleep. I said, mom. mom we are doing we're doing it we're taking care of ourselves you know we're not on like drugs like just slacking off you know not taking care of our, you know and so i just had to reassure them uh, my dad came up and helped us put in our wood stove to make sure it was safe he wanted to be part of that um and uh they said they couldn't live like this no way but you know they're yeah the wood stove was a game changer for us, really. Without that, we wouldn't be doing this. Um, and that just goes to um, having all the free heat now. We can go harvest wood on our land, all the dead wood around, collect it. 
and you know chop it up and we have a wood stove about the size a little bigger than like a shoe box but so like sticks will heat this place up for an hour or so you know you just grab a bunch of sticks and uh, and man it feels when that then going writing a check out but they were they were most nervous about us not going to the doctors, saying no to the institutions, the schools. They were very, very nervous about that kind of stuff. And we just explained to them, do you know when the schools were made, why the schools are here, what their purpose is? And they don't know any of that. So it was us informing them of what the choices we make and letting them know you raised us, me, raising my my son the way i see best fit thank you very much yeah and my family and i don't really talk to a lot of my family so i don't really think of what we're doing so uh i talked to my mom brother or two um but yeah they think we're not <laughs> um but you know we think they're not for domesticating themselves so where they what to do when the shit hits the fan yeah well I, these people they have like you said amy they have no clue about these institutions the way that they were founded they just they just go along with it they just do it because they're told and it's that type of mentality that it's that those types of actions that really le keep leading us down this path to utter destruction. And people like you guys and my myself and uh, my wife and our little family, you know, there's plenty of other people that I can think of off the top of my head whose actions are doing things that are making things better. You know, making it harder for them, the big them, to have all the control that they want to have. And these older generations, shame on you because you've had just as much opportunity to learn all of this stuff as anyone else. And the fact that you still haven't is just, a, a, it's a disgrace. So uh, <laughs> I have very little respect. I think the same way. Yeah. I have very little respect for some of the people that make up the population of the older generations because of not only the way that they've been acting the last couple of years, but even before then, you know, it's just absolutely just terrible. And it's terrifying to think that a, that a big, you know, a big scary thing that's like not even really real, you know, that could really change so many people so quickly. And turn so many people against the young you know it, there's never been a time in human history where the older generations were put before the younger generations they've all they've always been the older generations that have stepped up to the plate and said we'll take the heat for the younger generations and then this time around it's like everyone's going to kill grandma it's no one's killing grandma the pharmaceuticals are killing grandma i'm not doing it but Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they just led us right into this uh, slave system. Those baby boomers that were all into peace and love in the 60s, they got they got their heads really far up their arses. And uh, now, yeah, that whole uh, generation were raised right with the television. So fixed beliefs. They're some of the hard, most hardened, but people like you said yeah it's it, it's dumbfounding to me that, that they would turn so, so bad yeah but um let's work toward wrapping it up here i know that we were doing a short one this evening um and we can I don't know, maybe try to take some calls if if uh, if you guys are up for it. Yeah, we're Invite coming in to... clear. That would be great. All right, so uh, we got a few more minutes here. If anybody wants to call in, go to freemindne.com forward slash call. 
and uh, we'll bring you in and you can ask a question or you can have your comments, whatever. And, uh, and if not, then we'll just continue talking for a few minutes and we'll call it a night at the hour mark. Awesome. So what do you guys, so you guys, obviously you're doing homeschooling and everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. Did I lose you? Was I on mute? No, no, you're here. Oh, we're listening. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just curious about like your process with homeschooling. What kind of approach do you guys take to that? Yeah, we we uh, do the radical on schooling or just not really. A, it's um, self-interested learning, we call it, with what he wants to learn and when he wants to learn it. We, we try to steer away forced learning because no one learns forced. We tried that too. I tried it. I'd be like, okay, buddy, are you ready to learn your letters? <laughs> and I'd sit him down and it, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't work that way for us anyway. So um, when he's really excited about reading like the stop sign, we read the, the letters, uh, you know, what it says. He's learning numbers with the game Go Fish and money. He counts his money in his money bank, his piggy bank. Um, so that's mm -hmm. how, yeah. Um, so learn, learning, it just comes up naturally. And the other night at 9.30 at night, he wanted to learn his letters. He really excited about it. So we just wrote out, out these words and he was excited, having so much fun. And yeah, he's to read and write. And uh, he's really, really smart. And it's very natural. Yeah, so they're, we're... they're all geniuses. And we just, if we allow them, facilitate that, they will, they'll blossom like the, the beautiful flowers. Right, that forced learning never goes well with anyone. Who like to be forced to learn anything, right? That's right. He's learning carpentry. He learns, he's learning how to uh, put wood in the wood stove. Right. So he does. Uh, so, yeah. Life skills in the garden. He's a huge help, you know, yeah, big, with, big in the garden and how and how to grow things, how to uh, basically get the soil healthy with microbes and get life into the soil. So we we constantly um, we love to learn, Amy and I, and we're so curious. We wake up. We, we want to know more. We want to know more truth we want you know that motivates us every morning and when we get up and so he's with arc and the, that the arc is his education yeah, we too. got the arc from mark Passio. thank you mark uh and that's his basically exactly his education and we just watch the coolest movies about all sorts of stuff yeah every night if we want we watch all we watched a uh, today elephant Right, about nine eleven being an inside job. It's a great movie. Yeah, great one. And uh that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, he's heard more David Ike, more Passio. He's heard almost all of Passio's presentations, uh, gone into his subconscious. So that uh that's gonna help him down the line. Um he knows more truth than some people in their nineties that we meet. So age does yeah. not mean much. Yeah, he didn't. We didn't want to give him the pro, the miss program. You know, the right, the uh, indoctrination right. That we were raised with. Yeah, we have a call. We have we have a call. Let's bring him in. Oh boy, we have uh, Derek Bartolucci. <laughs> my hey. Hey. Bonjour. We oui, salut les gars. Bonjour, bonjour. Thank you, Derek, for calling in. You're live on the Guide to Truth. What's on your mind this evening, Derek? Yeah, James, just listen in. Uh, I tuned in like 15, 20 minutes ago. I was about to turn in. It's like 
about four o'clock in the morning. But uh, hey, man, when you're, you really care about that truth, you live a non-linear lifestyle. And uh, I had a really great taste of uh, how you guys are living. Uh, literally, when I was out in a region in France called Brittany, just like two weeks ago, pretty much. And uh, staying with some really great friends, one of my best friends in France. And him and his wife, they just, yeah, they bought like two acres. And they're just, they've been revamping the whole thing. They're, they got like a three-stage house, but it's, you know, flat. And like every 50 years, this older family, like, all right, new little box house, you know, next to the other one. And they were raising cows. They had like uh, apple orchards and they had like a whole apple cider, like, you know, factory kind of like a mini thing to attached to the house. It's just like really incredible going back to these ancient, oh, you know, so awesome. ways of life in a sense. It's not that ancient, right? Like, why do we, why do we kind of like, I got to catch myself saying that shit sometimes, right? We, Got to bring back that the renaissance, whatever, you know, renaissance, man. Like Justin Wagman and folks like that. And, uh, yeah, like like we, you were saying, John Paul and Amy, like waking up every day. Hey, we're so inspired. There's so much shit to do. And being on land, like being able to work with the earth and, and all the elements around you and just have to bear, you know, grin and bear it during certain seasons. But you're going to be you know, reaping what you sow, which is so many beautiful seeds in so many ways. And uh, it's really great. And you see the fruits of your labor, like literally. And, and my friends, they, they got a fucking like a greenhouse thing. They, I was helping them weed out and stuff. And like everywhere I go and like hanging around, you guys saw me traveling around the States and stuff. Hanging with folks in like Oregon. I'm like, you know, gardening with my friends and all this stuff. It's just great life experience. And uh for me, it never gets tiring. It never gets boring. Yeah, I call it like, and I don't like to call it work, but it's like that life work, you know? And like every day you're going to be on something because you are the master of your domain in a sense. And that's an extension of being the master builder of your own temple within your soul, yo. So let's give it that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sorry. Well, it's great to see you all, by the way. Awesome. You too, yeah, bro. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. motion to yeah, you out there. You guys uh, connect and all that stuff. I love seeing this shit. They're on a delay, nice. by the way, Derek. So, damn it. I got crappy internet here. I'm sorry, guys. I hope I came wow. through okay. Wow. Yeah, I don't came through loud. Mind boggling. Yeah. We're all connect. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah, likewise. So, and, uh, it's great to see you guys uh, getting more podcasts in. You guys had Will Keller on recently. That was cool. James, yeah, we Dan might be for a little conversation on that ourselves, possibly, but we'll see about that. On other topics, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys might have mentioned there's a conference coming up, as well as another one in a couple months that James is going to be a part of with the seed. Yes, indeed. And then there's the Trivium next weekend on the 24th, 25th. All that jazz. Sorry to plug in that shit. It's for like some, a lot of cats are going to be up in there. And it's uh, a lot of anticipation. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll be there. Talking about anything there. that we'll I know. We'll check. We'll be check. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, Derek. Thank you for calling in, man. Yeah, for sure, y'all. Yeah. Have all a right, wonderful bro. evening. I might have to go to sleep because I got work in five hours. Say la vie, mon ami. All right. Yes, much <laughs> love, Hitchhiking on the way to truth, yo. Much okay. love, All right, Derek. Peace, man. Have a Au good revoir. time over there. And <laughs> love you. <ya. laughs> so thank you, Derek, for calling in. Uh, always nice to hear from Derek Bartolicelli. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that, I guess we'll we'll close out, and uh, I don't think anyone else is going to call in unless they do. They have only a couple of minutes left to do so, but that's okay. We did an hour. It's good. You guys got to wow. get the little man to bed, what anyways, right? Thank you so much for having us. On. I mean, we're we're down to chat a little more, brother. But it's been a pleasure, and um, yeah, 
Great time. You're welcome to come out here, brother. Whenever you'd like to uh, bring the family on a mini vacay, whatever you want, just discover this area. We'd love to have That would be awesome. You. Another truth family. Yeah. 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 All yeah, right. the little guy, him and Jameson would love to uh, play, I'm sure. Oh, I bet they'd have a blast. I bet they would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there he <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll sign off here. Um, and thank you for coming on. And we'll talk again real soon, okay? Great. Thank you for thank having you us. Thank you for having us, James. Appreciate you. Much love, Lucia, brother. Thank you we for love all you, you do. Thanks for all your great work. You do a lot. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. It. Have a good night. Hey. Me too. Much love. So that was Amy and John Paul. Uh, for, uh, go to their website. I forgot to ask them to do it, but it's loveolution.net. It's in the description for this evening. And um, you can find them uh, on Facebook as well. So uh, with that being said, we're just going to have a short outro here. Uh, I will not be on the air next week. I'm going to the Porcupine Freedom Fest up in the White Mountains up here in New Hampshire. So there. The, the week after that, July 1st, we will be back on the air for another Black Pill Digest, Sean McCann and I, and we're going to have fun with that. So um, if anyone would like to help out, you can go to uh, freeyourmindne.com forward slash donate. And you can find all the different ways that you can help support this show, help help it keep going and growing. More importantly, the most in the the most effective and best and most um, accessible way for you to help this show keep going and growing is simply by just giving it a like, subscribing to like a YouTube channel or the Odyssey channel, and by sharing it, sharing it with more people, share this show with your friends. Uh, go back into the back catalog of the show and, you know, find, <laughs> find some information that you'd like to share out there. That is the best way to help. So any of, any of those options, I really appreciate it. And you have no idea how much it would help, but regardless, I will keep doing this because that's, what's most important is getting the information out there. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to tell you all one last thing. I love you all. And it's through conversations with people that I find it best to explore topics and to really get down to the bottom of how we can really do things, do different things, take action and make a difference. So think to yourself, um, think, think to yourself, how can you make a difference? How can you act more morally how can you be a better version of you we have every day as an opportunity to do better to do more good deeds and to really you know stand up and say no to those who would want to see us suffer uh, and with that i'll leave you uh, i love you all have a great night and i'll see you in a few weeks peace <laughs>